Hello students, we will learn something about 8086 pin diagram today. We have already gone, have gone through the behavioral architecture of 8086. This 8086 architecture has address bus, data bus and control bus. So this all are included in 8086 pin diagram. This 8086 pin diagram is a 40 pin IC in which we have different pins allocated for different purpose. One is ground pin, then the second is a clock through which the clock signals are provided which are an input signal which allows the 8085 sorry 8086 to synchronize with all other peripherals. That is why we have a clock with the duty cycle of 33%. We have a power supply with plus 5 volt and two ground pins allocated to this 8086 IC. Then we have a reset pin. So this reset pin is used to start the microprocessor execution from FFFF to reset all its resistors and all its um, uh, flags. So this will be done whenever the microprocessor restart or start executing from the base. We have these address lines starting from AD0 to AD15. So from AD0 to AD15, these lines are multiplexed with data bus. The data bus are bus are, starts from T0 to D15. We have 16 bit data bus and 20 bit address bus. The address bus is starting from A0 to A19. So A0 to A19, this particular address bus in total is allowed to generate 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 to F, 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 H, F, H. Total 1 megabyte of memory support can be generated. This multiplexing of address and data bus is used to minimize the size of IC so that the same lines can be used for generating address and data as well. This can be separated or this can be used for specific purpose with the help of ALE signal. We have this ALE signal through which the address can be latched, will be made available when it is high. This is NMI is a non-maskable interrupt line. Whenever uh, non-maskable interrupts get into 8086, then 8086 has to provide the service. So whatever is the input, it has to be delivered as a non-maskable interrupt. Then we have a INTR, interrupt request pin, which is the input to microprocessor. This is an interrupt request generated by other peripherals. So whenever microprocessor gets INTR as an input request from the peripheral. So immediately microprocessor 8086 will generate acknowledgement signal to that device and says that the interrupt request has been acknowledged. Then it has a HOLD and HLDA hold and acknowledgement pins which Hold is input whereas HLDA is acknowledgement signal to a peripheral device. Then we have the address and status lines. The address A16, A17, A18 and A19 is multiplexed with S3, S4, S5 and S6 control lines. So S6 is a logic zero line, whereas S5 indicates the condition of interrupt flag bit. If the, whether the interrupt flag bit is on or off, that will be 
made available the status of that will be made available on s5 line whereas s3 and s4 indicates which segment is being accessed during the current bus cycle so if on s3 line is zero s3 line and s4 line both are zero then extra segment will be in use means data will be either communicated to extra segment or collected from extra segment if it is 0 and 1 then the stack segment will be in use whereas if it is 1 0 then core segment and if it is 1 1 then data segment this is how the segment access will be defined with the help of the status lines then this bus high enable is multiplexed with s7 whereas the bus high enable this bus high enable signal allows to use d0 to d15 lines for the communication of 16 bit data otherwise it is one bus high enable if it is 0 0 a0 and bhe both in combination allows to be used for communicating 16 bit data if it is 0 0 then whole world means d0 to d15 all the buses are used to communicate 16 bit data if it is 0 1 then high bus only d a to d15 will be used whereas if it is 1 0 then low bus from d0 to d7 bus will be used if it is 1 1 no selection there is no use of any buses will be done this mn and mx this pin allows the microprocessor to work in a specific mode if mn is on means if this particular line is 1 then minimum mode is activated it means the microprocessor is working in minimum mode if it is 0 then maximum mode is in use or working so this particular pin will be provided by providing a plus 5 volt to this particular line whenever we have minimum mode in use then these pins will be used whereas these pins are considered as a minimum mode pins and the this these particular pins are used for maximum mode whenever we have zero on this particular zero means we have no voltage on this particular line minimum mn and mx then it is considered as maximum mode so all these pins will be used for maximum mode we'll see the minimum mode pins first this read is rd bar is a read signal so this read signal allows the microprocessor to read the contents from other devices or it can be said that microprocessor is reading from other devices write means this is writing the contents into a memory or the peripheral devices we have a m slash io bar so this particular pin allows the communication whether with memory or with io devices if it is one then my it says that microprocessor is interacting with the memory if it is zero on this particular line means it is communicating or interacting with io devices then we have dt slash r bar so this is data transmission and receive signal dt slash r bar is having one or plus 5 volt means data is being transmitted if it is zero on this particular line it means data is being received from a particular device den data enable so this allows the data bus to be in use since the address and data bus are multiplexed together means den allows the data bus to be in use rather other than the address bus s0 s1 and s2 
this signal are input to a288 device this is a bus controller device this allows the uh, other buses to be hand over to other devices or not that can be understood or mutually communicated between the microprocessor when s0 s1 and s2 these are status signals these are input then that time it will be understood that 000 means inta the interrupt acknowledgement will be communicated if it is 001 then it's a read port then the port will be read port is nothing but a, a a space from where the microprocessor is going to communicate the data to some device so if it is read means the data is being collected through a read signal write means data is being written communicated to that particular device halt no operation or you can say the operation has been stopped code access if it is 100 means code has been collected code is always available in code segment so that the code will be collected and that will be processed read memory and write memory so read is getting a microprocessor is getting a data from a memory and write memory means writing a data into the memory this these operations will be done with the help of s0 s1 and s2 request grant and request request and grant will be done for a dma direct memory access so whenever a direct memory access operations are done from memory to memory processing will be done that is handled with request and grant operation lock the lock uh, output is used for uh, locking a process for further use so that the communication should not be interrupted and it will be done as per the request QS0 and QS1 this allows to define the Q status of 8086 this is many times said that a coprocessor can understand the status using the message on QS0 and QS1 if it is 00 then Q is idle whereas if it is 01 then first byte of op code will be communicated if it is 10 it is said that q is empty 11 then subsequent bytes of op code will be loaded to the q this is how the pin diagram of 8086 uh, has been understood so the remaining things are the real working process of all these pins we'll see in the next lecture thank you